In this video, I'm going to show you how I made this garden chair. So to start off with, I'll be using some treated 2x4 timber. Um, this is ready available timber that you can get from most um, DIY stores. And I'm, I chose to use treated timber just so it can last a bit longer outdoors. Um, you can see I'm using a mitre saw to make all the cuts, but you can actually do this by hand or even using a circular saw. I'm just putting down some tape to show you the measurements. Um, there will be some plans um, separately added in the link below. Um, and basically what I'm doing here is making a square um, which is uh, 18 inches by 22 inches um, for the actual seat and then the frame is then built around this. Um, you don't need to use a nail gun here. Um, I chose to just use a nail gun just to hold everything in place before I decided to then screw um, all the pieces together. I use uh, lots of glue and um, long enough screws to be able to get them nice and tight and the screws I'm using are decking screws um, one because they're suitable for outdoors and secondly the head of the actual screw is very small so they kind of sink in and, and it's not very really visible the decking screws have a sort of a, a square shaped bit um, so that came with the pack but you, you could use um, any screw really this is just what I had available Moving on off camera, I cut up all the leg pieces. Um, again, the dimensions and the plans will be um, to the to the plans I use will be linked below. Um, but you can see the first piece is 27 inches, um, and the other one is 23 and a half um, with certain angles and 15 degree angles either side, and finally 22 inches. Here I'm using the the wall of my workshop to give me a straight line to work against, and I'm using a square to make sure that the pieces are perfectly 90 degrees to each other. Um, and then you'll see how I then angled the, the, the back leg um, at 15 degrees to give me the right angle um, for the position to be. For the back piece, I didn't use any exact um, gauges or angle finders. I just kind of roughly did it by eye by using the um, the wall as a reference, um, as a flat reference, and then I worked out what would look um, the correct angle by using the sides and, and, and making sure they're flush. Um, and then I marked and, and, and put some um, glue in place and just screwed down, um, holding that piece in place. I then repeat the same thing for the opposite side. So moving on now, I'm using one of the leg pieces I did and I'm just marking um, the distance I wanted um, from the floor. This particular chair um, I designed um, to be slightly higher up um, because it was going to be um, for an elderly person. So I did want it a little bit higher than usual. Um, but again, the measurements and the plans, if you want to adjust the height now, this would be the, the ideal time to adjust your height to have a little bit higher or lower um, depending on your preference. And then I just position the um, the square in, in in the right position, using a couple of nails and screws to just hold this, everything in place. 
and then after this I then screwed the other side of the leg um, in the exact same manner. It's important to get all the measurements correct so you, the last thing you want is your seat to be um, not in the right position so just take your time and, and make the correct measurements before screwing down. This is now um, the piece for the backrest. Um, you can see I angled the piece um, on the top and the bottom just to give it a more of a nicer look. Um, the angle I went for is just to follow the same direction of the, the um, armrest, which is a 15 degree angle. Um, and having some clamps in place, it, it just really helps in, in terms of making sure the pieces don't move. And again, I just uh, screwed this in place with using a bit of glue as well. You can see in most of the joints I'm using at least two to three screws. Um, this is only because I just don't want the pieces to be able to move and, and, and have give it any flexibility. I just want it to be as strong as possible. And we just repeat the same thing for the other side. So using the tables for now, I'm just going to cut some slats, um, which is basically me trimming the 2x4s in half. Um, I went for slightly thicker slats because I just wanted it to be really solid and, and long lasting, so I, I kept the slats quite thick. Um, if you wanted to save a bit of money and save a bit of um, time, you could buy these slats ready trimmed down. Um, you could also do them a little bit thinner. Um, and what I did first before I screwed anything down is just um, did a drive run and see how many I needed and whether they all fitted in, in the correct spacing. Um, and then I just used a, a piece of wood to give me consistent spacing throughout um, just to make sure that there was enough slats for the entire seat. And again, here I'm just trimming down some pieces to create some more slats. Uh, this is for the back of the seat. Um, and in, in the exact same manner, I just trimmed them in half all the way down just to give me um, enough slats. And to fix it down, just added a bit of glue, used a clamp and, and just screw these in place. I use the same spacing I used on the seat um, with the back of the rest as well, just to keep it more consistent and, and to look evenly and uniform. Here I'm cutting a piece off um, a three by one, and this is treated timber as well. Um, the reason I'm using this particular uh, material is because I wanted a thinner piece, but which is also quite wide. Um, and these two pieces are going to be used for the armrests. Um, so I cut it to length, and then I'm now going to join them together by using some tape. Um, but before I do that, I'll just mark up the shape I want. Um, 
I join them together so I can have an even cut for both sides um, instead of having to cut them individually and I just took it over to the bandsaw and make these cuts. Again, same method, use some wood glue and some screws to hold this down. The final preparation before we did any finishing or paint, um, I just used some exterior wood filler to just fill all the holes, sign them down and I just used some garden um, outdoor paint um, to paint this in a nice grey.